Kia ora everyone, I'm Grace, one of the developer evangelists at Zero. Welcome to another episode of Community Corner, where we answer questions from our developer community. If you have any questions you'd like answered in the future, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Today, I'm going to be chatting all about tenants. Xero is a multi-tenanted platform with different types of tenants. You can think of tenants as different objects in our API's architecture. Our core APIs use the organization tenant, but we also have the Workflow Max, Practice Manager, and Xero HQ tenants. So, here are some common questions that I'm asked about tenants. Can users access multiple types of tenants? Yes, a user may be able to do this. The types of tenants the user will be able to select during the authorization process are dependent upon the scopes that you request. That means that you'll be able to plan for the types of tenants in advance. How do I find out what type of tenant the user has connected to my app? You can find this out by calling the connections endpoint. Each connection will tell you, amongst other things, the tenant ID, the tenant name, and the tenant type. As many integrations use the core APIs, you're most likely to encounter the organization tenant type. What is the tenant ID, and does it change? The tenant ID is a unique identifier for each tenant. You will need the tenant ID in order to make any API calls for that specific tenant. The tenant ID will never change for a tenant. Why do you provide the tenant name? As users can access multiple tenants, we've found that it's best practice to display the name of the tenant they've just connected. For those that are building integrations that will be certified, you will find this is a requirement of certification. If you are using a tenant that has a tenant type of organization, you will see that the tenant name and the organization name on the organization endpoint are the same. Those are all the questions I have for you today. Hopefully I've covered off some useful information for you. If you have further questions, feel free to leave them below, or you might want to check out our code flow page for OAuth 2. That page will give you some better insight into the process of making calls with the API. As always, you can reach us on developer.zero.com or our other social channels. And remember to like and subscribe for more videos.